one is, 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 is in the car. You have, okay, uh, there's somebody trapped I, in a car? Uh, uh, yeah, I think they died, unfortunately. A quick thinking driver rescued that woman, but the traffic troubles during the height of the evening commute were just getting started. Welcome to Coin 6 News at Noon. I'm Jenny Hansen. Now, this afternoon, traffic is flowing smoothly along the Markham Bridge, but yesterday was a very different story when a semi transporting a huge girder for the Milwaukee Max line rolled over onto a car. Alicia Esch joins us to break down these events. And Alicia, it was a scary experience for drivers. Jenny and everyone out there, scary experience is really putting it lightly. We actually have some of the 911 calls from people on that bridge when the truck dropped its load yesterday right around 3. But before we get to that, a quick recap for you of what happened. A truck carrying a steel and concrete beam weighing around 75,000 pounds tipped over blocking traffic. You can see the flames right there. And we just learned that the driver's name is James Pennington. He is 76 years old and the beam that was on that truck fell on top of a woman's car, 23-year-old Dana Buse, and then burst into flames. And that is when the calls started coming into the 911 center. They're, they're putting it out right now. I see fire extinguishers putting it out. Okay. Do you see any placards on the semi? Excuse me? Any placards, any hazardous semi? Do we know what he's carrying? No, he's just carrying a huge uh, concrete steel beam. Okay. He had pilot, he had pilot trucks and everything, but it was top heavy. He tipped over. Is it still on its side? Uh, it's on the side. Still on its own side, right? It. Yeah. In other words, it didn't go all the way over and land back on oh, its it wheel. It is still on the bridge. And the car is burning. It, there, it hit a car which is now burning. Definitely scary moments. Fortunately, though, Miss Buse was saved by the steer driver of the truck, and then crews started cleaning up all the mess. Odon says the bridge was closed for around 12 hours, but it was clear around 5 this morning, and traffic up and running again amazingly around 5:45. And I did speak with Odot officials, and spokesman Don Hamilton says that they are looking into why this particular move happened during rush hour. The investigation continues, as this was a very heavy load at a very very heavy traffic time right now. Specific permits are required for loads this big, but Jenny, fortunately, the bridge is structurally sound and they've checked it out. Wow, scary stuff, Alicia. Amazing that no one was uh, more seriously hurt. Thank you. Well, yesterday's closure got us thinking about the Portland to Milwaukee light rail project and if that project will be impacted by the delay of replacing a girder. Chad Carter spoke with TriMet officials to get answers on how this project will move forward. A massive I-beam on its side on I-5's Markham Bridge, a far cry from where it was supposed to be delivered as part of the new Tillamook Branch Bridge of the Portland to Milwaukee light rail line. We looked into who actually owns that beam and the impact it may have on the project. TriMet tells us they don't actually own those massive girders until they arrive at the construction site and are inspected and approved. And the manufacturing is some contracted out by the project's head contractor, then to be delivered by a specialty company. Obviously, we don't own it at this point, and so don't know the financial details. But what we do know is that uh, they will build another uh, I beam. It takes about a month to do that. Uh, regarding the schedule, uh, there's always a little float in a, in a construction project. We don't believe it will impact the overall schedule, but certainly we monitor that. Five beams traveled the route successfully yesterday. Another six are due to be in transit today, TriMet officials say, but they didn't offer when they might arrive, saying ODOT is actually in charge of permitting the travel plans. Many of the agencies involved are meeting today to discuss yesterday's situation, including whether those large loads should be on the road during rush hour. TriMet says this is the first time something like this has happened with one of their projects, but it's all part of the coordination that goes into an event this large. We take a lot of uh, pride and uh, concern about every element of the project, even though it's removed, uh, who owns it, actually. Chad Carter, Coin 6 News.